Welcome, welcome. Let's see who's here. I'm so excited to see you all. Hello, hello. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Carol. Hi, Karen. Claire, Julie, Kristen, Leslie. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Lillian. Randy's here. Julie, glad to be here. Can't have camera on though. All righty. Okay, well, glad you're here. <laughs> A huge welcome, everybody, and a huge welcome to everybody on the replay as well. We have more people joining us. I can see we're just letting everybody in. Where in the world are you tuning in from? We'd love to love to see where everybody is tuning in from. I'm just going to let Ray's coming in and Susan's coming in. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. A huge, huge welcome. So as everybody is finding us and getting settled, getting nice and comfy, take a moment just to turn off anything that might go ping, make sure you can hear me okay. So excited for our time together. Then we have West Wales, Michigan, Lewis, my old hometown, Sarasota, Lincolnshire, Japan, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Alrighty. You can see when people are stuck in the waiting room. So hopefully the waiting room will let them in in a moment. <sighs> Who has been to one of our masterclass wealth energetics experiences before? Let me know in the comments. Is this your first one? Huge welcome, whether you're coming back or whether this is your first one. Huge, huge welcome to you. So your experience is designed to help you get the results that you want. Even if you've tried everything else, or you're in the middle of a business plateau and you just want it to stop, or you're having a surge of cash coming in and you want to make sure that, you're, that you hold it. There we are. Coming back, first time. Exciting, exciting. Oh, good. Ray got in. Fantastic. <laughs> All righty. So everyone's just sharing whether they've been coming back. Second time. Love the first time. Awesome. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. We are diving in today. Today, you are going to be learning the exact steps to focus on to master your wealth energetics so you always know exactly what to do to have complete confidence so you can hit your financial revenue goals and each day builds on the next so you'll want to be here tomorrow because we're going to be diving into the six energetic blocks and then how, how they're slowing you down and what you can do about it on all the things we're diving in we're diving in deep welcome ray welcome debbie welcome welcome and i just wanted to say a huge thank you as well to everybody who has been inviting their friends, colleagues. We so appreciate you. And please do, you're invited to share that you're taking part in the masterclass this week. Share screenshots of our live experience together, tag us in it. Share your light bulb moments, you'll inspire some people to, to come and join us. And every time we see that you've shared, we'll pop your name into, a, into our draw we've got some incredible prizes for you so you can win a business forecasting session in the akashic records with me you can win some of our akashic record activations as well we've got the space time mother wound witch wound sister wound the wealth blueprint collection the future self that, that we've got so many so so many and so i love giving away prizes and um would love to say thank you to to you for for sharing and for inviting your friends to come and join us and we've also got prizes this week for you when you are taking action. So really encourage you to take action. Let us know what you are contemplating in the in the chat. And then, of course, in the Facebook group as well, we've got we'll have a homework thread so that we've got that space where you can share your daily wins, share what's coming up for you and um, ask questions. And every time you're sharing in the Facebook group as well, we'll be popping your name into the into the draw too. 
So lots of lots of chances to 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 win prizes, which is which is super exciting. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to my team who are here supporting everybody this week. So we have Princess and Moses. Moses is my son. He's in the in the Zoom room with me. So providing a concierge service to you to make sure you've got everything you need. If you need a link, Mo's got your back. He'll get the link for you. Um, Princess will also be in the Facebook group, help making sure everybody can find the Zoom room. And um, if you need a link as well, she'll she'll help you. And they'll be in my DMs too this week as well, helping you find all the things, answer, answer any questions um, so that you can get the results that you have come here to come here to get. So a huge welcome to those of you who just joined us. Wonderful to see you here. Alrighty, so let's take a moment to set our intention. So just to allow yourself to ground, to become fully present. Really want to be really focused on our time together. So I invite you to gift yourself a couple of letting go breaths. So just breathing in for four and then just let go as you breathe out. If you just land in this space, setting the intention to call all of your energy back and whatever it's just been doing so that you're 100% in your own energy here now. And then from this space, inviting you to set your intention, just to allow yourself to think for a moment. So what is my intention? What is it that I want to create, to up level, to experience during our time together? What's your intention for our time together in this masterclass? And importantly, how do you want to feel at the end of our time together? I'm just giving you a moment just to contemplate that. And to build on that, to think, okay, so what is the revenue? What's the impact that you're committed to creating in your business over the next 90 days? What's the company bringing in? And what revenue and impact are you committed to creating in your in your company? In the rest of 2024. And just as you're bringing that into your mind's eye, just invite you just to take a moment to allow yourself to really tune in to the feelings in your body as you feel what would it be like to receive this can you allow yourself to receive even more just notice what that feels like in your body Just breathe this in. And now just to do a little sense check, is this what you truly desire? What is it that you truly desire? Allow yourself just a moment to expand that possibility of desire. Allow yourself to desire, to desire more. What do you truly desire? Allowing yourself to feel this in your body. What will this feel like when this is done? This is complete. You've had all the experiences that you've desired. You're surrounded by love and abundance. Can you imagine how this will feel? Just notice 
how the cells of your body are responding. How is your heart responding? Let's just take a moment to anchor that in. I'd love to hear in the in the chat. How is this? How is this feeling? You share your intention in the comments and in the chat. And as you share, this is so key because this helps me to tailor this event to where you're at because there are subtle nuances as to how the energetic blocks show up at the different stages of business and what kind of things may pop up and so on. So share your intention for our time together, how you want to feel, what's the revenue and impact you're committed to creating in your company over the next 90 days. What revenue and impact are you committed to creating in your company in 2024? And if you're on the replay, please pop it in the Facebook group so I can see, see what your intentions are, witness them for you. And I'll see what may be coming up for you every step of the way. Okay, so we're starting to see where some of the nuances and resistances may be coming in. So we have the desire, feeling happy, and then recognizing there's some sadness coming in the end. How was everyone's experience? Were you recognizing that it felt neutral? Did it feel exciting? Did it feel as if that feeling of, yeah, I don't really believe it. <laughs> as if that's going to happen. Or did you have that embodied certainty? Like, of course, it's going to happen. This is what we do. And so it's a release of stress and tension. Lock is always the how. Minimum 2,000 every month for my online business. I've got wonderful, warm feeling, felt calmness. All right, we've got the feelings coming in. Keep the feelings coming. It's my intention to serve you this week for, for you to expand your wealth consciousness so you can allow your business growth. You can allow your revenue growth. You can be able to serve more customers, more clients, and to make that impact that you've come here on this planet at this moment in time to, to make. And to explode through any money ceilings that our subconscious has created to keep us safe and in line with our, our current identity. Alrighty. And know that I will circle back and read all the comments. If I don't speak to it right now, I am reading them and I will circle back and, and read them again because I would like to make sure I haven't missed any. Alrighty. So what I'm sharing with you over our time together is how I balance the inner healing work with our impactful manifesting rituals, how I navigate through the, the emotional stickiness that always comes up when I've expanded beyond my inner default set points and when I'm not embodied in that future vision of myself that's that's required to get me to where I want to go to and to make the difference that I want to make in, in this life. And... For me, my, we've been in business eight years now, coming up to eight years now. My first three years in business where I was getting all the foundational pieces set up and my signature program launched and training in energy psychology and healing modalities and the Akashic records. Whilst I was doing all of that, it did feel very, very hustly. There was little flow. Did that resonate for anyone? So what I realized was I'd literally swapped the corporate hamster wheel and recreated the exact same wheel but in the entrepreneurial space, different environments, same person, same experience. And whilst we grew to six figures and were working with the most amazing clients, it, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah, it was exhausting. exhausting. It really was exhausting. And I was studying and contemplating what the needle movers were. What was it that was going to make the real difference? Because I, I knew how to grow successful businesses have run multi-million pound um, businesses, commission services in, in social services across all different types of sectors. So foundational business principles are the same. Um, you just apply them in different ways, depending on where people are at in, in their businesses and different strategies work for different, um, you know, in different seasons in businesses and, and, and all the things. So I know the strategies, I know the strategy stuff. Having built and led many and I'd had the burnout. 
And for me, I just didn't want to frazzle my my nervous system again or, or, or work even harder. Does that resonate? Anyone else had burnout here? Because it's horrible and your body's going to do everything it can to make sure you never have it, never have it again. And for me, what I realized through that reflection and through all the studying and um, working with clients and the, the work on myself was the key within my identity. And um, when I'd left social services, I thought I would feel really light. You know, that moment, I can remember it to this day, where I literally just closed down my laptop after 13 years of service there and doing that final email, which just felt really bizarre because I wasn't going to receive the response. And walking down to the front desk to hand in my lap laptop to the security guards. There's no one around that I knew. <laughs> it felt very sort of like a non-event. And I just sort of kind of walked out the door. Bye then. <laughs> See you after 13 years, you know. But I had such conflict going on internally. I had been really resistant to having any sort of leaving party. And yet, you know, I coordinated and arranged all of this, this is what I wanted. And I was so confused by my emotional state, this emotional roller coaster that was just literally going on inside. And what really shook me was when I realized that what these emotions were, they were grief, it was grief. I was grieving who I thought I was, that, that version of myself. And I was then in this state of like, well, who am I now? You know, what, <laughs> what's, what's going on? And I'd realized I bought into that illusion that I created myself, that somehow that role, that role was my identity. Without it, though, of course, I actually got to, to, to be me. But at that point, I didn't really know who I was because I'd just been so busy wearing that busy mask of success and pushing energy. But I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. Always in that do, 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 do mode. Anyone else in that constant doing energy and pushing energy to kind of get the thing done? Yeah. And from all of that experience, as I threw myself into my my new company that I created, my new role, I started to create my my new identity. I, I had this revelation that, you know, how I perceived myself and my identity was just absolutely key to the kind of life that I created that I wanted to have and the kind of business that I was creating. And this work. And I know you guys are here. You all know this and coaches know this as well. I know we have a lot of coaches in, the, in our community. So let me know in, in here if you are a coach. We know this work is ongoing. We're continuing to expand our consciousness throughout our lifetimes. Our consciousness absorbs everything around us. We want to make sure that we're consciously and intentionally putting into our consciousness what we want to create and embody and experience. So of course I continue to do my own inner work as I'm up leveling and you know we're growing our company. And the blocks that I'm going to share with you this week, they happen for everybody at every level, whether you've just started in business, whether you're at seven figures, eight figures, nine figures. They're going to have slight nuances to them, of course, but they're going to come in when we haven't embodied the future self-consciousness, as I call it, that we need. So this is key for our business growth. And I just invite you to contemplate. So if we have a, let's say you have a 500K a year business, we're never going to be aligned with a million dollar strategy because our brain is wired at that 500K. Our nervous system is wired and calibrated to that 500K. The 500K feels safe. Our feelings are calibrated to that to that level because that's what we're experiencing in our reality. Unless we're doing the work and we're then operating from that future self-consciousness to be able to create these rapid results. So I want to share with you the exact steps to, to focus on in mastering wealth energetics so that you always know how to have complete confidence that you're going to hit your financial goals even if your success curve is looking a little bit like the one on the right and you're thinking like, I'm just going round and round in loops at the moment and I just want it to be a little bit more streamlined. This is where mastering the energetics can really smooth out your pathway. Your energetic vibration and frequency does the heavy lifting for, for you. And when things come up and 
opportunities to pivot, et cetera, come along through along your way. Your vibration carries you through that so that you can have the results that you desire. Does that make sense? And truly with this work, you start to experience more opportunities coming your way, opportunities that are going to create more impact for your company, more revenue coming into your company. You'll have more surprises and delights than you could have ever hoped for or imagined. And someone was mentioning it's the how that always trips them up. This is where by doing this work and of course taking some action, actually it's easier in a way when you can't answer the how because your conscious mind just can't get involved. And so often we limit ourselves by going for, I'm just going to manifest this amount of money just because then it's going to pay X, Y, Z bills. And then that kind of cre creates a contraction. Does that make sense? But what we all want is to ultimately, why we are wanting to create these experiences to feel truly free, like we can do anything that we want. Whenever we want, we want to feel really good really good about all aspects of our relationship with money about creating money generating money receiving money circulating money spending money without worrying about it or without worrying that the business is going to suddenly fall apart does that make sense to be able to feel like that we have we are being the very best version of ourselves we want to be able to use all of our gifts, tap into all of the potential that we have to be able to earn and achieve and evolve and actually become the person that we have the potential to be. We all, everybody here has a potential to become an even better version of ourselves than we are right now. Does that resonate? To feel even more successful, even more abundant, confident, worthy, fulfilled. Ultimately, people want more money to have more peace, freedom and fulfillment. Does that make sense? To be able to financially relax, to be able to have it all. And what I mean by that is in the terms terms of the trifecta of prosperity, which is wealth, health, and, and love in our lives. And to be able to have that for the people that we love, truly love our lifestyles. So we can wake up every morning feeling excited, excited about the work we're doing, the impact we're making. We can just show up and be very present in our work because we're not worrying about money. And this is the thing. The reality is there may be some inner conflict, as Nicholas is saying, very love-hate relationship with money, me and money. These inner conflicts can take us out of the game. But let me know which one resonates for you. So is it are you resonating? Do you have a love-hate relationship with money? Are you shooting on yourself? So are you saying I should be happy because I've got a six-figure salary? I've got should be happy because I've got a seven figure salary or I should be happy because I have a spacious home or I have a relationship I desire. But then there's also this nagging, growing feeling like something's missing. Who here celebrates all their goals? Or do you forget to do so? <laughs> so? Every time you accomplish a goal, do you just add another one because it's not feeling like it's enough? It's like, right. Tick, done, next thing. Go, 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 go. Or perhaps no matter how much you're making, you're just still not as happy as you feel like you want to be. Or we've talked about burnout, your health is suffering. And here's another one that creates real inner conflict is where we feel like we've sacrificed. So there's such programming around that sacrifice. You know, we work really hard to get to where we are. And we've sacrificed going out with friends, time with loved ones, holidays, weekends, sleep. Anyone sacrificing sleep? <laughs> so that you can put in 150% of your time, energy, and, and your resources, all your resources going into your, into your business, into your company. 
And then you're looking at that next level of income and impact and freedom in your life and wondering, how am I going to get there when it's taken all I've got to get here? So we're desiring that, but there's this conflict inside. Or it can feel like things aren't moving as fast as they should in your business, even though you're putting in everything you've got. So like we're judging ourselves. Let me know what, what resonates for you here. Okay, yeah, lots to reflect on here. And of course, in this now now moment, markets have changed and matured in the online space. What worked before might suddenly not work. And that can then be enough to send us down a rabbit hole. Instead of understanding the opportunity to innovate and to go deeper within, to strengthen our identity and our resilience. And this is really key. And an example I was thinking about the other day is many entrepreneurs kind of buffer up against this, you know, markets changing and maturing um, and, and not seeing that they need to develop their strategies. And this is true whether you're a company of one person <laughs> or a big company. And we only need to see so who around us in all the industries and our industries is, is, is no different. If we think of, so in the UK, I don't know what the equivalent would be in other countries. So let me know. So in the UK, there used to be, when I grew up, a wonderful um, place called uh, Blockbusters, where you went and hired your video and you'd hire it out for, let's say, three days for seven pounds or something. It's all, we all thought it was very expensive back in the day. And then you had to, like, like you know, hiring something out, um, from a library. And then you had to return it in a certain period of time, otherwise you got a fine. <laughs> Blockbusters is no more. Blockbusters could have become Netflix because markets matured and changed. So someone probably from Blockbusters has evolved into Netflix. I don't know who the people are along the way, but I just use that from what we see um, on the outward face as, as, as customers is that the market evolved and changed and some companies haven't. So... Where are the markets changing and maturing, creating inner conflicts? And how can we actually look, look at that as an opportunity to innovate and to go deeper within so that we can strengthen our identity and our resilience? This is so key. The, the, the most significant contribution you can make to yourself and your company doing this work. And of course, in, in the online space, you can see other people growing their businesses seemingly faster, thinking, why well, are they doing it more quickly than I am, however it may be? It's the sense of, and it's going to happen at any level of business, somehow you're feeling like you're behind. Everyone else has moved farther, uh, further along. But it's feeling like there's like a mountain of potential, just can't tap into it. We thought that making more money would replace the stress and anxiety and worry. You'd have freedom instead and grandness and joy, but actually you've got more worry. More worry has, has come in. Anyone else recognize that actually the, the worry and the anxiety has, has come up more as more money's come in? Let me know what resonates. And the key thing is for all your customers, your clients, they want the results that they have come to, to your services for. If you sell products, they want that product to work. They want to have the result that that product is going to give them. Where are you? A question for you to contemplate. So for those of you with service product, uh, service based businesses, what is your belief in yourself, in the service that you offer, and in the clients that you work with, that they will have the results that they desire? On a scale of one to 10, with one being 
not at all, 10 being 100%. Like 100% know my clients will have the results that they desire. 100% know I'm working with the right clients so they can have the results that they desire. 100% belief in myself that I can hold the container for them so they can have the results that they desire. Our clients are desiring to go deeper and to really have that transformational result. But anywhere there's a little bit of wobble that may have come up because of the business expanding, the identity changing around you and the nervous system capacity and all the things going on and start to chip away at that, which will then have an impact on our clients' results. Does that make sense? This is great. Let me know in the comments what's what's coming through, where you're at on those belief markers. Okay, so we've got some high numbers, we've got some lower numbers, all the numbers are coming in. And as you were reflecting on this, is this giving you some insights as to where some of the resistances are, where your next level may be hiding behind? I've facilitated like over 10,000 Helix Method sessions now and work with hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs at all levels of business, six-figure businesses, multi-six-figure businesses, millionaires, multi-millionaires. And there are some key blocks that always come up. We are going to start to dive into them tomorrow. And the thing is, these blocks make it harder for us to grow our businesses. And the more blocks that we've got, the more energy that it's taking, impacting our frequency, all that stress and hidden anxiety, negative emotions, taking on too many projects, trying to juggle all the things. That all puts a huge strain on our energy field and increases that risk of more stress, more burnout. Don't want any frazzling of the nervous system. Does this resonate? Let me know in the comments if this resonates. So as we're reflecting on, on this at this moment, I just invite you to take a, take a moment, see where you're at with this. What is the belief that you hold that if your company grew to, to its next stage, whatever that marker is, so let's say you're wanting to grow, you're at 50K a year and you're wanting to go to 100K a year, or you're at 100K a year and you're wanting to go to 250K a year, or whatever that next level is, seven figures, eight figures, What's that belief? If your company grew to that stage, it would mean X, Y, Z. Do you believe you'd have to work harder? Do you think I couldn't sustain it? Or do you worry you'll, you'll get burnt out? So let me know. Pop a, pop a yes if you're fearing working harder. You're fearing getting burnt out. Fearing frazzling your nervous system. Fearing missing out on time with children and family. Sneaky one is a fear of visibility, knowing that actually as your business grows, you're going to have to be more visible. What's your relationship like with visibility? Fear of being judged. Big one, it comes in as a like tiny little quiet voice <laughs> that says, can you really do it? Can I really do it? Maybe you're currently doing all the right things. But no matter what strategies you're implementing, just can't kind of break through it. Something's not feeling right. It's feeling off. So we can see this duality. Everyone's reflected that you've got this duality that, of the desire to make the money, to make the bigger impact, to serve more people, to make a big difference. And then all this stuff bubbling up internally whilst we're trying to navigate and lead and to fulfill the services that we have set up to, to deliver. So we, you can see the duality, right? So we can hold our vision and our desires and then have this duality of these fears. And this is all happening in our energetic field. All of it's impacting our vibration, that our coherence in the vibration that we're sending out to, to the universe. And this is where we find ourselves going on a vibrational roller coaster. <laughs> because our vibration is affected by our identity, 
the environment that we surround ourselves in, the results, this all creates a feedback loop from our energy corresponding with our reality. So it is this that we must master to master wealth energetics, to truly grow our companies to the level that we desire. And we do this by creating the consciousness of our future self with, with multi-dimensional healing and manifesting rituals. This is how we get rapid, long-lasting results. Your consciousness, your frequency is made up of three layers of consciousness and they all need to be in alignment to manifest effortlessly. So your soul, your higher self, conscious mind, your subconscious. And the subconscious is, is your friend, is a master, creating your reality, all in line with the programming that is received throughout this lifetime, throughout your birth, your parents' transgenerational patterns, media programming, societal programming, cultural programming, all the, all the things. These all make up your identity. And then your identity, from your identity, you have a reality model. You have a perception of how life is. These are your self-concepts. Think of these as a cluster of beliefs that you have around all aspects of, of life. And these beliefs inform the emotions that you feel, they inform your behavior and the actions that you take or you don't take. And all of that is making up your human Wi-Fi, that vibration and your magnetism. What are you in resonance with? So therefore, what are you experiencing in life? So all of this is in your energy, sending out a frequency as a magnet to the universe. And there's three energetic states that I wanted just to touch on, just so that you can understand what's going on energetically within your human Wi-Fi. And the simplest way to think of this, in, in energy psychology, we talk of these three energetic states within the expansion state and the contraction state. So the flow state, this is expansion, this is the receptive state, this is the one we want. This is when we're aligned, we're an energetic match to our desires. Things are slotting into place. We're like, this is so easy. This is amazing. We can feel the certainty of our results. We just know something's going to happen. There's no doubt. There's no question. We're already there. It's done. And we're going with the flow of the universe. Key is our nervous system is feeling safe. Our higher self is just surpassing herself with all the wisdom and the intuition that's just dropping in. We're feeling amazing. And then we have the contraction states. And there's two aspects of this state going on energetically. So we've got the resistant energy and we've got the reverse energy. And what I mean here is we have energy reversal. So this describes energy flowing in the opposite direction to, to what it would normally be going. And when you have energy reversals, you can become stuck or frozen in time or in a particular way of being. So much so it reverses the flow of energy around that topic, around that subject. So think of this as energetically as a default set point. Does that make sense? Anyone recognize any energy reversals? And you'll have a bunch hiding that you won't know, but we're going to start to dive into that over the, the week together. So the flow of energy is moving away from what you want. And this is where you can find yourself, you know, putting in more and more time into something and it's just not changing it. Or you're repeating patterns or you're feeling trapped in like a holding pattern or a loop of like relentless limiting beliefs. You're like, oh my God, what's going on? You've likely got some reversals at play. And then these reversals, they come from you know experiences in our past where we were shocked or traumatized, didn't have a coping strategy for that experience. Then our nervous system was triggered and the flight, fight, freeze, was in collapse mode were all set off. And then that energetic imprint is held in our subconscious, in our energy field. And then any time we've got a, another experience that's on some level is reminding us uh, of that and is connected to to this in our subconscious, this energetic loop is, is re-triggered. And when we feel them triggered, we can then go into a contraction. Makes sense. And then we have the resistance and that's where we can feel like we're, I call this like pushing treacle up a hill because you're going in the right direction. Be like, oh my God, this is so slow. Like push, push, push. And what's going on? And this is likely where we've got these dual beliefs going on that right? one step forward two steps back type thing you know so you could believe i deserve to receive 50k over the next 90 days and you can believe i'm undeserving of receiving 50k over the next 90 days and this creates this resistance this creates this this contraction 
And so our resistance is created through our identity, the resistant thoughts, beliefs, or in alignment with our old identity that you know we've outgrown. And it's so good at helping to keep us in the same spot. It triggers thoughts in our heads that at those moments where we have a choice, whether we believe that thought or not, and we take action off the back of it. And we can find ourselves going back into, into a loop of an experience that we don't want to experience again. So we want to change these reversals and these resistances so that we have more and more of ourselves into the flow state where we're open to receiving across all levels of our conscious and our energetic being. And when we're in that coherent and, and flow state, we, we've got more energy and we manifest faster. Things truly are easier and easier. The easier it gets, the easier it gets. This is the expansion and flow. And this is what we're up to with the Helix Method, where we're creating the consciousness of our future self and our manifesting rituals are creating that, that flow state, that expansive state so we can hold it and create more with more with more ease. And here's the thing, the subconscious doesn't necessarily know the difference between excitement and nervousness. This is really key. I want you to write this one down. Do you remember anyone saying to you when you were nervous, probably when you were a kid, just tell yourself you're excited. Your body doesn't know the difference between nervousness and excitement. Just tell yourself, don't be nervous. Just tell yourself you're excited. You're going for your driving test. Don't be nervous. Just tell yourself you're excited. The feeling is the same as a way to sort of combat the nerves. Well, the thing here is we can be super excited about a huge leap in business. And our body is interpreting the nerves and our amygdala starts to be activated. So we're feeling excited, but the body's sensing nervousness. And before we know it, we've got an energy reversal from having a huge growth in business. And if we don't know it's there or how to transmute it, it's going to be hanging out in our energy field, vibrating out so that we bring what is in resonance with that to us. That makes sense. This work is really, really deep. It's really important. I believe it's the most important work that we can do for ourselves and our families and our businesses for all our life. And the impact that we're, you know, we're all here to make. So let me know what resonates in the comments. Energy reversals, resistance, flow, you recognizing where you may be in flow in some parts of your life where you may be in a contraction in other parts of your life. And the important thing to, to speak here is this is all completely normal. <laughs> this is being human, part of the human experience. The key here is knowing what to do about these things so we can work with our consciousness, work with our frequency and allow our frequency to do the heavy lifting, heavy lifting for us. So let me know what you, what you recognize in the different areas of your business. So in sales, in marketing, in the products that you're offering, clients you're working with, your cash flow, your leadership consciousness, your wealth consciousness. You may have some areas in flow, some areas in resistance, some areas in reversed energy. Randy is saying I released, released two major energy reversals last week after five years of energy work. Yay! Awesome. That's going to be huge. I see that our wealth consciousness, it underpins and it's interlinked with just all areas of our, of our businesses, of our company. So taking that full energetic responsibility for what we create consciously and unconsciously, because of course we're creating unconsciously as well at the same time, is, is, a, is a huge game changer. And there's some principles I just want to share with you because these are really key to be mindful of when we decide to consciously create our reality. So these can come down to these six reality creation principles. Just think of these as truths that underpin the keys to creating limitless possibilities, exploding through your revenue ceiling in, in your company. Strategy is only going to get you so far, but mastering the energetics will allow you to create with more flow and ease and, and exponential expansion. And you're more likely in that flow state to choose the right strategy for your business as well. So in terms of mastering energy psychology, this is what I want you to bear in mind. The first principle is everything is energy. 
including your thoughts, emotions, your beliefs. All of this forms part of your identity and your human Wi-Fi. The second principle is energy follows attention and your attention is your greatest asset. As wherever your attention goes, your energy goes, so your attention becomes your intention. So it is really key to be intentional. The third one, your subconscious. I want you to think of your subconscious. It, it is your friend. It wants to keep you safe. And it has a 100% success rate in creating reality and to keep you in alignment with your identity and your behavioral patterns. So these are your default set points. Make sense? The fourth principle is to create a different reality, you must have embodied the identity of your future self into your subconscious. This is how you be, how you show up in the world and everything that you're doing in this now moment. And the fifth principle is when you align your higher self, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind, and you bring that all into alignment, you bring yourself into rapid resonance with your desires. You know, creating from higher planes of consciousness, you're truly able to be non-attached to the outcome. Because when you're attached to the outcome, you're actually creating from lower planes of consciousness, from the astral plane. It's a much slower vibration. There's loads of ego there. And it just requires more to manifest. And the sixth principle is you are going to receive what your subconscious feels safe to receive. Which means your capacity to receive. It can always be expanded. That makes sense. I do talk a lot about soothing your nervous system so your nervous system can expand so you're feeling safe to, uh, to allow more in. We don't want to trigger it <laughs> so it contracts. Are you ready to master these reality creation principles to be able to master wealth energetics? Because the thing is, I think it's really key to remember that it's actually very easy to take energetic responsibility when things are going well. But yes, I'm in flow. I did that. I'm a master manifester. But it takes commitment and courage to be energetically responsible when, when we stop doing the things that we know that work. We are creating something. We know it. <laughs> Which is why I like to remind you about these reality creation principles. And the thing is, to remember that our cells in our bodies get addicted to the emotions that we are used to feeling and our subconscious is going to be masterful in recreating that experience so it can feel that chemical hit so this is why you might start to see things like having a sickness after a windfall or money just disappearing after a windfall or the fear that you know can start to creep in that it is going to suddenly or, or disappear Oh, we're doing really well. We're in flow. We're doing the. We're helixing every day. We're feeling amazing, and then suddenly something happens, and we just stop doing it. We've got to catch ourselves in that moment <laughs> and lean back in. Subconscious is saying, "Oh, hang on a second. We've got to bring her back to this default set point." The body's going, I, "I've got withdrawal. I need to feel more stress." So emotions like our bodies can get addicted to emotions like stress, embarrassment, shame, guilt, your current set point of self-worth. And then our subconscious will masterfully recreate an experience so we can get that, get that chemical hit. And of course, consciously, most of the time, we're not aware that this is going on. Have you ever caught yourself doing that? Just out of interest, let me know in the comments where you, you were doing something that was working and then you stopped doing it and you've got no idea why you stopped doing it. Perhaps you were in a program, you were loving it and suddenly you were too tired to take action on it. Suddenly you tell yourself you'll be get burnt out, you're really tired, you're going to go to bed, you won't show up live for the call, you're going to do that instead. The body wants to go back to what it's familiar with. It feels easier. The body wants to pull you back to that familiarity right down at that cellular level, which is why we need to be held and supported in containers so that we can break through. So that our blind spots and our body's chemistry and the subconscious doesn't pull us back in all these creative ways that I've been talking about to those same old default patterns. It is through our consciousness that we're creating reality and our, and our reality is it, it's a reflection of our consciousness. Does that make sense? 
So it's our identity that's creating those paradigms and the concepts. They're creating the beliefs and your emotions and feelings, and they all inform your actions, your behavior. It's that feedback loop, and you're creating your reality. Get the feedback, it embeds it further. So this is why we want to continue to, to work on our consciousness, so that we can be really intentional, because that's where we have choice when we're being intentional and programming into our subconscious so that we really start to allow our frequency to start to change. And our subconscious loves rituals and repetition. This resonating. And here's the thing, all of the reasons why we want to have more business growth, more growth in our investments and the bigger deals, all of that's in our conscious mind. And then all the reasons why not to, <laughs> not to allow them more money in are held in the subconscious mind. They are we hidden away because everyone wants to succeed. Everyone wants to live at their highest potential. But what are our different levels of consciousness up to? So if we are disconnected from our higher self and we haven't got that energetic support of our higher self on board for our manifesting, then if we're completely out of alignment with our higher self, then the subconscious is running the show. And this is where we start to see this push-pull going on. It's just much trickier <laughs> to manifest. It's so frustrating. So we want to have our higher self, our subconscious and our conscious mind all aligned, all working together. And I'm going to introduce you tomorrow how we do that with the Helix Method. We're going to be helixing together tomorrow. Who is looking forward to that? Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to doing some helixing, some energy, energy psychology together. So yes, I am. All righty. So to wrap up, we have shared the exact steps to focus on in terms of mastering wealth energetics. So you always know how to have complete confidence that so you can hit your financial goals. This is the steps you need to take. I've shared the reality creation principles so you know how this works. And you've set your intentions for what you want to achieve over the next 90 days for your personal growth and for your business growth. And really understood about the energetic states that you're in at any one moment in time. Pop your intentions for the next 90 days for your personal growth and business growth in the comments. If you want to replay, pop it in the Facebook group because I want to read them. I want to see where everybody's at, what we're manifesting. And just to remind you of our aligned actions, just to recap, so sharing your intention in the group, what you're wanting to manifest over the, the next 90 days. You're invited to share screenshots so that you're entered into our prize draw as well. Invite your friends and colleagues. They will thank you for this. They really will thank you. We have uh, Limitless has become world renowned. We're hugely impacting tens of thousands of people's lives. So it's my highest honor to have you guys here. I can't wait to see who's going to win all the prizes this week. And would love to take a moment just for you just to take a moment and think okay what is my takeaway from today this is so that you can really anchor it in so we've got our intention what's your takeaway maybe i've reminded you of something perhaps you knew it but it just slipped your consciousness you just need to bring it forward into your consciousness to focus on right now and also invite you to notice how expansive and aligned your intention you're feeling right now on a scale of one to 10. Let me know in the comments. Are you like, I'm feeling like it's a, you're not quite there yet. Or are you feeling like, you know, it's done. I've done it. It's already done. Or it's like, oh, something's res resistant. Something's in reverse. Let's flush it out. That's what we're here for. We'll have a homework thread in the Facebook group as well. So put your updates in the Facebook group, use the thread. I'll be in the Facebook group later today. Continue, continuing conversations with you all. You're invited to book an energetic alignment audit call with me. This is for CEOs, leaders and coaches whose businesses are established who are growing towards that six-figure mark or you're at that six-figure mark and above. 
This is for you if you haven't had one before. And if, if you are a client of mine, then lean into the program that you're in. This is my highest honor to offer these energetic alignment audit calls with me. There's just 15 minutes and we'll tune in to find out what's going on so we can keep you moving, tailor your experience so that you get the results that you have come for. And I'll be in the Facebook group answering questions. If there's any questions coming up, then please do pop the questions in the Facebook group. We'll be gathering all your questions. We'll have a session on week on Monday, or diving into all the questions that have come up. So we keep you moving forward. All righty, so exciting. So we'll be back tomorrow at same time, same time, same place, <laughs> 2 p.m. UK time diving into how these six energetic blocks are slowing down your next level of success. So we'll see how they've been showing up in your business. You're going to know exactly what to do so you can financially re relax. We're going to give you our step-by-step -step guide that we've created exclusively for this masterclass. And I'll guide you through. We're going to be helixing together. So I'll guide you through so you can find out what is hidden. All righty. Thank you so much for joining me live and on the replay. And until tomorrow, I will see you all then. Sending you all off with lots and lots of love. Take care.